Hey guys, you're watching Educate India and today we'll discuss about Kubernetes architecture. So let's jump in and get started. We'll discuss today about master node, worker node and different process running within these nodes. So first we have to understand like what is a node in Kubernetes. So basically a node is any kind of physical or virtual machine we are calling a node in Kubernetes. So we have two different type of nodes in Kubernetes, master node and worker node. And we have different kind of process running within these nodes. So if you see this diagram, uh, we can see like this is a box. We are calling it as a master node and then it is having different kind of process running within it. We have separate boxes we are calling worker nodes and it is having different kind of process running within it. We can understand like any kind of machine we can create and we can install these process. We can run these process within that machine and that process generally decides like it's a worker node or it's master node. If we we'll, uh, run these process, so it will become a master node. If we we'll run these kind of process, it will become a worker node. So let's understand about the master node process. So mainly, you know, master node will have four different process running that controls cluster state and worker node. So process will be API server, scheduler, control manager, and etcd. So these process have different different tasks. So we'll understand these process one by one. So first we'll understand what is the API server process. So mainly let's say as a user, I want to interact with Kubernetes. So API server acts as a cluster gateway or it's a kind of entry point or gatekeeper. So mainly API server, you know, is the first point where the request comes and it mainly validates the request. So let's say if the request is validated. So normally it forwards the request to the another process. So this is a kind of entry point, the API server. The another process is scheduler. So scheduler has a responsibility to decide the nodes for scheduling the pods. So let's go back to the previous diagram. We can see here we have master node, we have multiple worker nodes. So how it helps like scheduler mainly decides like in which particular node the new pod will be scheduled. So scheduler has some kind of intelligence, you know, of checking the resource availability or utilization within the worker node. So let's say if worker node is having 20% availability of new pods, uh, resources and let's say worker node 2 is having 30 percent uh, resource availability or it's having you know worker node 3 is having 60 percent so these kind of calculation can be done by scheduler and, uh, and mainly scheduler decides like wherever uh, having you know more resources for new pod so it decides that particular node so scheduler has just responsibility to decide the worker node where the new pod will be scheduled. But actual scheduling or actual running that container uh, operation will be performed by the process within the worker node. So scheduler just decides the node, but actual responsibility of running that container or pod will be performed by another process within that worker node. So that is the second process scheduler. Uh, we understood and the third process within master node is control manager so if we go back to this diagram we can understand so let's say if any pod is crashing or dying so control manager detects those changes and it helps in recovering those pods so it mainly uh, helps but you know it will just create the new request to the scheduler and again scheduler will decide the node and then you know within that node uh, there will be process that actually runs that container so that's how you know the control manager helps in detecting the cluster state changes or any any pod is crashing so control manager will detect those changes and it helps in recovering that particular pod now fourth process is at cd so at cd we can understand as a kind of key value store that contains the cluster state data so mainly at cd we can understand at cd as a cluster brain so it is having all different kind of data so let's say if you are adding a new pod to any worker node or any pod is getting destroyed within worker node so all those entry all the information will be available within the at cd so this is a kind of key value store having all the cluster related information and any other process like control manager or scheduler mainly they refer at cd for those cluster related data so let's say how control manager knows like any pod got crashed so those kind of information actually a control manager fetch from the at cd and that's how control manager knows and it helps in again recovering those particular pods so at cd is kind of common store where it contains all the cluster data but at cd will not contain the application related data that's the one difference between you know, the data uh, type within the at cd also let's say if we are having multiple master nodes so in that case at cd will be the distributed storage or distributed store across all different nodes 
so let's go to the next uh, node that is worker node and we'll understand like what are the different process within the worker node so mainly uh, worker node will have process like container runtime kubelet and kubeproxy so as we know like worker node is actually running those applications or any kind of containers so worker node needs more resources more cpu more memory because it actually runs the containers worker node so worker node should have a one process called container runtime any kind of docker container runtime or any kind of other container technology so that runtime is mandatory within the worker node the second process is kubelet so mainly kubelet process is required to actually run those containers. So Kubelet helps in running the containers within the pod. So like we understood like scheduler within the master node helps in deciding the nodes, but actually running the containers, the operation to run those containers will be performed by the Kubelet. So actually Kubelet runs those containers within the worker node. So any new, new node we want to add, so we can decide the node using the scheduler, but Kubelet will run those kind of pods. So Kubelet runs those containers within the worker node. Now the third process is a uh, proxy. So proxy is mainly responsible for maintaining the network rules and forwarding the traffic to the pod. So proxy mainly deals with the network related information. Forwarding will be done by proxy. So mainly proxy forwards the traffic from services to the pods. So it maintains the network rules and it allows the network communication. So proxy helps in uh, uh, forwarding the traffic from any kind of services to the pods. Now, if you'll see this uh, overall diagram, so we can understand like, we can understand the Kubernetes architecture by two different type of nodes, like master node and worker node. And these nodes are having different kind of process running within it. So master node will have API server, scheduler, control manager, and at CD. And worker node will have container runtime, kube proxy, and kubelet. And uh, the flow goes like, let's say as a user, I want to schedule a new pod. So the flow will go like the first the request will go to API server, API server will, will validate the request and let's say if request is valid, so it will forward the request to the scheduler and then scheduler will decide the node where pod will be scheduled based on the resources utilization and requirement by pod and once the node is decided then the kubelet will actually run that container or run that pod within that worker node. So that is a complete Kubernetes architecture flow. In the upcoming video, we'll understand more about Kubernetes basic setup, like we can install kubectl, we can interact with the clusters. So till then, stay tuned and thanks for watching.